my work shoes have seen better days. What do you think, guys? Can I sell these on eBay? Gently used? I don't know. I can get 10 bucks for those. What do you think? Goodwill would probably price them at $8.99. I have a new pair on standby, but it's that lovely time of year in Pennsylvania where if I was to wear a new pair of shoes to work, the salt would destroy them in a week. We're about to enter the, uh, the freezing rain season. That's that nice season between winter and spring. But it's definitely warming up. Garage sale should be kicking off soon. A yard sale treasure map showed a few, but they're probably 45 minutes south and I don't want to drive that far yet. So I'll wait for some local sales. We'll just keep hitting those thrift stores for now. Bernie's enjoying the, the melted snow. Bernie! You're gonna get all muddy. What are you doing? Take a quick look at a few things I picked up after work today. Um, this is a buck ninety nine at St. Vincent de Paul. Um, I was I was like, uh, you get those nervous sweats sometimes when you pick something up and you scan it and you see that it's like worth a few hundred dollars and you start to shake a little bit because you're like oh man how am i going to get out of this store without them knowing that this is worth you know a few hundred dollars this one unfortunately is not um when i scanned the barcode it brought up some comps that were like 250 but then upon further investigation um still looks like this is a 50 dollar bill everything's inside there's a a case that came with it to contain everything inside that's missing but the disc there's a CD, an art book, and the 3DS little diskette thing, whatever those are called, the game cartridge. They're all in there. Everything's perfect. So that seemed like a $50 bill. Pick that up. Two bucks. Uh, Row went to iron. I feel like I overpaid for that. I didn't want to pay $5.99, but um, it's pretty clean in there. I don't know why it has packing material in it. Um, I'm going to try to clean it up a little bit and... Uh, that looks like $40, maybe $50, will look a little better. You look up some of those Rowenta irons, um, some of them sell for like 100 bucks. So when you're at garage sales this season, make sure you're looking at uh, irons. 90% of them you're going to see are like garbage black and decker ones, and they're not really worth anything, but the Rowenta ones can bring some good money. Uh, we got these little salt and pepper shakers, this little mama bear and cub, and nests in the back. Um, they're old Japanese Napco. Salt and pepper shakers, that's another category that's it's strange. Um, I've sold some salt and pepper shakers for $100 and some for $20. Uh, the really desirable ones are birds. People really like the birds one, like the, the anthropomorphic birds with human eyes and everything when they're wearing hats and little clothes. So, um, I, I'm going to beat this phrase into the ground, but... Salt and pepper shakers are always a lottery ticket item that could bring. It looks like that's an easy twenty to thirty dollars, like a safe bet. But salt and pepper shakers can bring ten bucks. They can bring two hundred bucks. It depends on the collector. It depends on what you have. So never hurts to take a second look at salt and pepper shakers. A couple pair of jeans. Um, some old '90s silver tab baggy jeans. One of the few styles of Levi I'll pick up because they still seem to sell really well um, this goes along with like the Jinkos that I found a couple weeks ago uh, this is what the kids that couldn't afford the Jinkos were wearing wear the the silver tab baggy jeans skater jeans um, these are in really nice condition I don't even think they were worn honestly so I don't know that's probably 30 to 50 bucks I'll probably put them at 50 and this one, as I'm saying, I don't pick up Levi's typically. This one piqued my interest a little bit. Um, the tag stuck out to me to begin with because it doesn't look like typical Levi tags. Then I noticed it was an orange tab. I was like, orange tab? What's up with that? Um, these are made in the USA. These are old straight leg jeans from the 80s. 
And when I looked up the orange tab, straight legs, these seem to go for pretty good money. Um, anywhere from like $40 to $100. $100 like if they're still new with tags. But these are in great condition too. And I'm going to put those up for 50 bucks. So yeah, just a few little pickups. I'll typically, when I'm not out doing a full... Like, you see my haul videos, those are like a full day of thrifting or a few hours of thrifting. This stuff I just picked up after I left work because I have a Salvation Army down the street from me and I can hit the local Goodwill and St. Vincent de Paul on the way back from the post office. Nothing special, but uh, let's say everything sells for what I think. I mean, that's 100 bucks on the jeans. We'll say, conservatively, we'll say 30 bucks on the iron. 50 on the game, 20 there. I mean, it's a couple hundred bucks, and I spent $28 here, maybe. What did these cost? I think these were $2.99. Yeah. So, never hurts to stop when you're nearby. And now, our feature presentation. Hey, what's happening, everybody? Uh, back for another sold video some updates on the channel channel is going tremendously well we're probably going to be rounding out 1800 subscribers here by the end of the weekend and can't thank you enough for that that's awesome uh, getting closer to monetization way faster than I ever thought so that's exciting what's not exciting was the end of February uh, my sales were not great for the end of February. I had some really good high ticket sales, but it wasn't as strong as I wanted them to be. However, uh, that might be due to my own fault because uh, my listing and sourcing have been so-so through February, getting through that last hump of a uh, seasonal affective disorder and I just didn't feel like doing anything. So, finding some motivation and getting more items listed, doing a little better with the sourcing. Hopefully we'll start to see a, a pickup here in March, especially when folks start getting their taxes back. So, yeah. Again, not great sales, not a whole lot to talk about here, but some good bolos and some good high ticket sales. So, let's, uh, let's take a look. First up, these are in no particular order was Garfield. Not a whole lot to say about him. If you've watched the other videos, you uh, you already know about Garfield. Picked him up for $4.99. Had a whole bunch of offers immediately after listing it, and he sold within like 10 hours for full price, $43.44 plus shipping. And I already got positive feedback on that. So keep an eye out for those plush Garfields. Not all of them are worth a lot, but there's value in almost anything Garfield and not the CGI crap from the 2000s like vintage Garfield stuff usually does pretty well books plushes little toys even like the McDonald's toys they don't sell for a lot but people still want them next uh, this was in a haul video not too long ago I picked this up I don't recall I'd have to go back to the video this may have been upwards of like 14 bucks I, I don't think I paid that much maybe 12.99 if you're really that concerned, you can go find it in a haul video. I know I paid less than $20 for it. Um, this was all brand new, sealed in the box. I said in the video that I knew I could get at least 50, but I was going to push for 100, and I almost got 100. 94, 77 plus shipping. Uh, this sold the other day. This I paid what? It's Goodwill, so $1.99. It was a new sealed Barney DVD, and it had a little CD that accompanied it with all the songs from whatever is in the show. Had this up for $24.44 plus shipping. I got a best offer of $20 plus shipping. I took it, and it's gone. Uh, next. Next, this is a weird one. Uh, well, we'll talk about these a little bit. Um, the 78... Decca Flintstones Melamine Mug. Uh, I've had this up for a while. Every time I relist it, I get four watchers back. So I always assumed it was just other resellers. But it finally sold 
for a best offer of eighteen dollars plus shipping now it seems ridiculous but this is one of those avenues in your your thrift store that the the plastic aisle the Tupperware always just looks like garbage and for the longest time I don't even look at it like because I assumed it was all garbage who's gonna pay anything I know Tupperware has value but I don't know enough about I mean, I'm itchy right here I don't know what's happening I know that old Tupperware has value but I don't know enough about it to know which pieces have value and which pieces don't. I've tried to do some more research and it's quite frankly it's an area I get really bored in looking at Tupperware. But these Deca melamine mugs and bowls and things and uh, Whirly, Whirly Plastics which is actually a local company to me. Um, those things have tons of value especially I'll show I'll show you here on on the app those things have crazy value some of them these old gas station uh, chug mugs and all the old McDonald's coffee cups uh, Deca and Whirly plastics keep an eye out for them especially with the logos Dunkin Donuts McDonald's Pepsi Coke they have some great value and these are things that are constantly sitting in your thrift store that they're not paying attention to. They they price it like it's garbage. So you, you if you have a good eye and you're looking, you can make some good money off of these old plastics. Anyway, yeah, best offer of 18 bucks plus shipping. Glad to be rid of it. I was sick of listing it just to constantly have watchers that never wanted to buy. Next is this. This was in a recent haul video as well. I, I thought I overpaid for this a little bit. Um, I think it was 19.99. Just found it. And it was all new sealed in the package. So figured, you know, sometimes you gotta pay up a little bit. You know, you gotta spend twenty to make twenty. I listed it fifty nine seventy seven. Didn't take long to sell at all. I got an offer of fifty bucks plus shipping, and that's what I did. I took it. Uh, this is another Jess find. Jess is on fire for someone who's uh she was very reluctant to even entertain the idea of the reselling when I first started. She's gotten much more on board to the point that I've shown her some videos about people doing FBA and that's where she's excited. She doesn't care about eBay and all the, uh, the vintage garbage that I sell. She's much more excited about the idea of us getting into FBA because we have an outlet mall about 10 minutes from us and we see the, the potential in that outlet mall to be big FBA sellers. But again, it's that... that fear that I'm gated and everything and restricted so I I should be looking into FBA soon but uh, we'll see that's gonna be the one that Jess pushes once she's pushing me harder then I'll start looking deeper in FBA but she found these there was a whole big bag there was a what's in the six so there was eight of them because I still have two that I put in a separate sale uh, Powerpuff Girls, old Trevco ornaments, they were all new in the package. I had them up for 72 bucks. Had a few offers come in that were I didn't want to take. They were like $30, $40. And finally, I got an offer of $45. And I asked Jess, so this is your item? You tell me. Accept it, or do we keep rolling and see if we can get more? And she's not as greedy as I am. She, she'd rather get the money then sit and wait for the better money. So she says, yes, absolutely, take it. So I took it. $45 plus shipping. Paid a $2.99? $3.99? I don't remember. These numbers are starting to blend together to me. But it, it was it was 2 or $3 that we paid for the whole bag and $45 on the 6. And I still have two more to sell. So that could, in the end, end up being like a $60, $70 bag. That was a pretty good pickup. Jess is getting an eye. I'm proud of her. Next is this Penn State uh, Nike men's pullover. This was when I started recently. I've started to try to pick more clothes. I, I see a lot of successful resellers are they have success with clothes, and I've sold clothes, but I don't care about it. It's not something I'm excited about, but I, I see the value. I see the money to be made, and I feel like 
being in Pittsburgh, I have access to a lot of sports apparel. I have Penn State. I have the Steelers, the Penguins. I have access to all these, and I don't know why I'm not picking them. Um, so I'm, I'm going to start picking up more of the sports apparel in the area and see how well it does. This one did fairly well. 49.44 was my asking. Got an offer of 39.81, so I assume he was trying to shave off the shipping to bring it back, and I took the offer. 49.81 plus shipping. Next, we have a uh, old rotary phone, Stromberg Carlson rotary desk phone. Uh, it was a real nice condition. Well, it wasn't when I picked it up. When I picked it up at the flea market, I paid five bucks for it. It was pretty gross. I had to do some some significant cleaning on it. But once I cleaned it all up and took it out to Jess's parents' house, which is the only place I know that actually has a landline phone anymore, tested it, and it worked just fine. Uh, I've had this up forever, though. I've had this up since last summer. It's a saturated market. Rotary phones sell really well, but you have to have the, the unusual colors. This old beige color, not as desirable. So I got a best offer of $20 plus shipping, and I took it another listing like the Flintstones mug I'm happy to not have to see anymore. Next. Next was vintage 78 Mattel Electronics Baseball. I uh, picked this up last summer. This was in a bag with Mattel Electronics Soccer. Both were not new in the box. I mean they still had their box but the boxes had damage. But everything was inside. The instructions both of the games work, no battery corrosion or anything. Uh, the soccer sold pre... well, I lotted them together because when I first started reselling I liked to lot things because I didn't want to waste my 35 cents on listings if I went over my free listings. Lotted them together, they never had really much interest. Finally I split them and the soccer sold almost immediately. I think I got 60 bucks for the soccer. And then this one sat for a long, long time. Always had watchers, just never any buyers. I uh, got a best offer, 45 bucks plus shipping, and I took it. Next, we have a Bible, Talani Special. Uh, a 1981 Oral Roberts King James Version Bible. It was personalized to this gentleman here. Found that in a state sale, so. Uh, I don't even know that I paid a dollar for it. It was probably lumped in with all the other stuff that I bought. This is the first modern Bible I've ever sold. Uh, I've sold a couple antique Bibles from like the 1890s. Those sold pretty well. And some big, the, the, the family Bibles from like the 40s and 50s, which I don't know if that's really considered antique. But I've sold a bunch of those. I've never sold a modern Bible. So this is the first modern Bible I've sold. 2444 was my asking. I got. Oh, I guess I got full price for that. Yeah, twenty-four, forty-four plus shipping. On top. Next, this was a weird pickup. Uh, Conair hot lather machine. Uh, everything was new in the box. When I found this and comped it, I couldn't believe how much these sold for. Ridiculous prices. Uh, listed it for ninety-six forty-four. I got an offer within a day. I probably should have just waited. I probably could have got the 9644. I think that was even priced a little too low, to be honest. Uh, I got a best offer of 80 bucks plus shipping, and I took it. Next, we've talked about this in the VHS video, so I don't need to spend a whole lot of time here. If you want to know about this, go watch the previous videos of VHS sales. Uh, I was asking $33.77. I had this up, I originally had this up for like $50, but when I started to take a second look at the comps, uh, the ones that were going for like $50 still had their little Pizza Hut sticker intact. Uh, my sticker was gone. You can still see they were nice enough to leave me the residue. So once I realized I didn't have the sticker and that's what was making them even more valuable, I knocked it down to $33. Bucks, got an offer. No, didn't get an offer. That's what it sold for. Right? I don't think that's right. I think I got 30 for this. Yeah, 30 bucks. Someone offered me 30 plus shipping. So, 
we took it. Next, uh, Fitz and Floyd Autumn Bounty Salt and Pepper Shakers. Uh, there's a tray that goes with this too that was not at the thrift store, but I still saw the value in the Salt and Pepper Shakers. Had those up for $34.77. Took a best offer, 25 bucks plus shipping. Had I had the tray, I probably could have got 40, 50 bucks. That's what it looked like to me. Uh, next, next we talked about this in the haul video. Uh, this was a great find. Pointer Brand Chore Coat by L.C. King is the maker. Uh, I don't remember what I paid. Go back to the haul video. It was low. It was like somewhere between five and seven ninety nine. And when I brought it home, I brought it home thinking I was going to like fifty, sixty bucks. But then upon further inspection, I saw that I could get much more than that. Posted it for one forty nine and it sold so quickly, I, again, feel like I underpriced it. But I don't want to be too greedy. I don't want to be that guy who, you know, put up this coat for 200 bucks, send it, and then they're like, oh, this is a used piece of garbage, and I don't want it. But uh, I think I could probably could have got more than 149 especially because I was the only one on the market. But that was a great sell. And next we have this Boy Scout shirt. Uh... It looked fairly new. I think they sewed the patches on, and that was it. It didn't really look worn after that. So it had the the patches and the little shoulder things that I can't think of what they're called right now. So the shirt itself had value, and then when you paired it with the patches, once I kind of looked over the Boy Scout website and checked through eBay, like the patches alone would have cost somebody... 10 to 20 dollars to get all these patches to sew onto their shirt so I figured with this shirt having the patches already it was probably going to be a little more valuable so $29.77 is what I was asking and I got a best offer of $21 plus shipping and I took it and I don't think I need to say that I took it because obviously if you're seeing this I took it but I think it's it's uh muscle reaction. Like Lonnie was shipping on top, I can't help but not say, so I took it. I'll let you know if I didn't take it. Uh, this was an awesome, awesome sale. Another, there's one Goodwill. Uh, it's almost like they don't know that Sony is a thing. It's one of my favorite Goodwills to pick from because this is where any video you've seen me sell Sony products for the most part they've come out of this specific Goodwill. Uh, this was a mini disc recorder that all of these accessories, all the paperwork, the CD-ROM, the cords, and even the blank discs, these were all in one little bag for $4.99. And then as I picked that up and looked to the left, there's a mini disc armband case sitting next to it for $2.99. So for some reason they thought that the case was almost as valuable as all of this crap combined. Uh, this was another thing. I started looking at the comps and I got that, that shaky hand in the store. Like, man, $4.99 and this is like a $200 or more item. How am I getting out of the store with this? How? How do they not know this is worth what it is? But they didn't. So altogether, $4.99, $5.67, we'll say $8. Bucks. This was $8 bucks for all this stuff. And had it up for, originally I had it up I think around 240 because there was another one that was 250 so I tried to undercut them by 10 bucks. And lots of watchers, didn't sell, didn't sell. When I relisted, I was like, all right, let's 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 bump it down a little bit. Bumped it down to 199 77 and that thing sold at full price, no offer. 199 77 plus shipping and positive feedback. So that was a great sale. Like this, and the chore coat, and the hot lather machine made up for the lackluster amount of sales through February. You know, when you can flip three items for almost $400, I'm alright with not having a significant amount of sales. <coughs> Excuse me. <clears throat> uh, we talked about these in the VHS video. So I'm not going to spend a lot of time here, but 
had these up, 69.44, had some watchers pretty immediately, and, oh, yeah, they're VHS Disney cartoons, in case you haven't watched that video. Go watch the VHS video. And got a best offer, $55 plus shipping, and I took it. So that's it. Uh, like I said, as you can see, not a whole lot of items, but the dollar amount makes up for it. So that's it. Thanks for watching, guys. I'll see you in the next one. I got something interesting coming up. Uh, it's kind of a companion piece to the VHS video. Uh, if you're a video game seller, you may already know the things I'm going to talk about in the next video. But if you're a novice video game seller, you may not. So I'm with garage sale season rolling around, I'm going to try and show you guys some things that you they're hiding in plain sight that you might be missing that can make you some great money. So. Keep an eye out for that. That should be out sometime this week. That's going to be a little harder to put together than, you know, a stupid sold video. And, yeah, like, comment, subscribe if you haven't. It seems to be the thing to do these days. Subscribe to old KP Trainum. <laughs> uh, yeah, so I'll see you guys next time. Thanks for watching. Have a good weekend. Not my most productive day, but it's a Friday, so... I typically take it easy on Friday after a long week of work. Um, I don't think I mentioned these earlier. I picked these up at Goodwill the other day. Two bucks a piece. They were all sealed. That was the only reason I grabbed them. Um, on their own, they don't seem to have much value. I'm going to lot them up. Maybe I can get like 50 bucks. We'll see. Uh, I figured worst comes to worst, I'll just watch them. Um, I'm a sucker for old wrestling stuff. But, yeah. So, we listed those. Uh, we listed all the jeans that we bought, uh, listed that salt and pepper shaker, took pictures of these Dungeons and Dragons books, I haven't listed them yet, but the pictures are half the battle, once they're pictured, I'll, these are easy to list, I think I'm going to auction all these off, because looking at the comps, I really couldn't figure out what to price them at, so I'll let the market decide, so, not a bad day, um, should make a few bucks here, let's take a look at the momentum board.